If you watched Apple's Dub Dub this week, you would have seen the new liquid glass design. Right now, I'm going to show you how to create that liquid glass effect inside of Photoshop. I'm going to give you two versions. The first one's going to be quick and dirty for a beginner. Then we're going to go in depth and create a super detailed realistic one. Let's go. We're going to go into all the details. So depending on how much effort versus how good a result you want, you can jump off the train wherever you feel comfortable. All right, so let's just start off with something really simple to show how this effect is basically created. So we're going to choose the type tool and why don't we just give it white for the foreground color because I want to make this very, very simple so even newer users can follow along. Let's go for a thicker font, something like Approxima Nova. Um, we'll go for like a black. And then we'll just type in liquid, liquid glass. All right. And let's just make that big. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to hit Control T or Command T for free transform. And I'm just going to drag this out. Now they do tell me it's better to use the uh, numbers on here, but for what we're trying to do here, it doesn't, this is going to work fine. All right, so we've got some basic text and now we need to give it a glassy look. All right, so we're going to do this using layer styles or layer effects. And by the way, I'll drop a link and I'll give you guys the final layer style so you can download it and use it whenever you want. All right, so let's apply the effects, which is going to take us into the layer style. And this box will be very familiar if designers, photographers might be new to you. So we're going to choose bevel and emboss. All right. So notice as we do that, we get some kind of a bevel appearing. And the style we're using here is the inner bevel. And I believe this is the default. If not, just grab it. All right. And so we can see here, the first thing you want to do is make sure that depth is turned all the way up and then size. So what you want to do is have just a nice thin edge, not too thick. And depending on the resolution of the image you're working on, this is going to be different. Right now, as you can see, I'm at 50% magnification. So if you're at 100% magnification, you know, working on a smaller image, you might use half the settings I'm using here. But let's go a little bit wider just so we can see this effect better. All right, so we've got the basic effect going here already. Now, if you change these angles, you move these around, notice it changes the direction of that bevel. And then let me show you where this really happens. So if you look in the layers panel, you might have seen opacity and fill, two opacity sliders. Why are they there? Well, the same ones are up here. If we choose blending options, we get opacity and fill opacity. So that fill actually means fill opacity. And watch what happens if I take this down. Notice what that does is it hides the contents, the original contents of the layer. That's the pixels. So if I take it to zero, all we see now is the layer style or the layer effect. And this is what gives us that glassy appearance. Now, if you made your text white, you might want to give it just a little bit of white to kind of match what they're doing on Apple. It makes it a little bit more legible. Now, if you didn't do that, it doesn't matter. Because what we can do is we can go down to color overlay. We're going to click on the color picker and choose white. Now adjust how transparent you want it here. What if we want to make those edges a little bit more reflective? Well, we can do that. If we go to bevel and emboss, under bevel and emboss, you'll see gloss contour. And notice right now it's the defaults, just this diagonal line. If we click, we get other options. And this double one, if we do this double one, notice it gives us a much more reflective, shiny look. You could try some of the other ones to see the results you get from them. And as you apply different ones, you, you'll see, you know, a different amount of white is going to appear in there too. I'm going to go for this highly reflective. And one of the things you might see, see these jaggy edges? If you turn on anti-aliasing, see how it smooths out those jaggy edges? Great. And the one thing you might want to do right now is, you know, maybe play around for that angle or just go to the color overlay and we could add a little bit more white. All right. So this is a basic glass effect, which can be moved. Okay. So this is going to give you the real basics, but there's more to this going on in the actual Apple one. And let's go ahead now and we're going to do the more advanced version of this. All right, so let's go and we're going to grab a shape. So I'm going to grab a rectangle shape. And under the shape, you want to make sure you choose shape. You've got three options, shape, path, and pixels. We want the shape. It's going to give us a shape layer. And then we want to have a rounded corner. 
In this case, I've already added 121 pixels, which is going to work quite well for us. So let's do a. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag this out and we're going to create a square. Now, if I wanted to copy the settings from this other one, by the way, I could just hit the Alt or the Option key under the effects, drag them into my rectangle and notice I can copy them. But we're not going to do that because there's some other settings that we're going to do in here. And then we're going to apply our bevel and emboss. All right. So what we have right now is the settings from before. Let's just reset this. And I don't want to use an inner bevel anymore. But first of all, what I want to do is I just want to get rid of everything. So let's choose the blending options and let's get rid of the fill opacity. So we're just dealing with the effect. So this is what we're working with. Let's go back here. I don't want to use that. This time I'm going to use a stroke emboss because to me, this seems to look closer to what Apple is actually using. Now you don't see anything because there is no stroke. But if we add a stroke, notice we've got this white stroke. Let me turn off the bevel emboss. So we're just applying that basic white stroke. Now, depending on how thick you want it, this is about nine. Let's go just a little bit bigger. I, I feel like the nine is actually pretty close to what um, Apple's using, but I want to go just a little bit bigger so you can kind of see this maybe a little better. And then we're going to go to the bevel and emboss. We're using that stroke emboss. Now notice it's starting to look better. Now what we want to do is give it that gloss contour. So let's go into the gloss contour and we're going to grab this again and see how it gives it that bit more reflective, a little bit more shiny look there. Definitely closer to what we're going for. All right. Now there's another contour under here because I'm, I'm just going to make this bigger just for a second so you can see and then, then we'll just roll it back to what I want to use. But if you look at this, notice the edge. It's this kind of, see the shape of that bevel? So if we go under contour, we can turn contour on and we can use different shapes for these bevel edges. Look at that. And see how each one of these is giving me a different kind of an edge there. So this works the same as the gloss contour, except this is affecting the shape of the bevel and rather than the gloss. And make sure anti-aliasing is on so you don't get the jaggies. Go back to the stroke and we'll just bring that size back. I just made it small for a second just so you could kind of see what was going on. All right. Now we want to do a color overlay. Notice we get a little bit of that white color overlay. All right. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. So as you can see, and see how these edges are starting to look a little bit more like what the Apple one's doing. But there's much more to it than this. So let's look at some of the other things that are going on with this. One of them is if you look at the what Apple's doing, it's blurred underneath there. So there's two different types of blurs that we're going to deal with. All right. So what we want to do is we're going to grab our background. And we're going to copy it. Control J. Now there's many different ways we could do this, but the way I'm going to do it here is going to give us the most amount of flexibility. So I'm going to drag this to the very top here. And now I want to apply a blur to it. So we choose filter blur. And then we apply a Gaussian blur. And so what it's going to do is it's going to blur everything underneath there. So about 17.6 is good. All right. Why do we want to do that? Because just the area where this rectangle is, this should look blurred. So I want to clip it to that layer. So if we hold the Alt or the Option key and click, notice that this is now clipped to that layer. Okay. Now that it's clipped to this layer, you're not seeing the blur at all, are you? And that's because if we go under the rectangle shape here, the fill opacity is at zero. But if we now turn up that fill opacity, notice now we can see that blurred layer is showing through. Now, why did I do it this way? I'll show you why. Because if I move this around, we can reposition this wherever we want. So if you want a certain level of flexibility, that's going to give it to you. By the way, the color overlay is still working. See that everything's working there. And the only reason 
why I'm able to turn the opacity up now is because we're not using the original pixels. We're using this blurred layer as our pixels. All right, so this is going to give us another level. And this is going to give us a level of flexibility to work with. All right. So, so to go another step and make it look more like what Apple's doing, I'm going to create a distorted blur around the edges. We are going to lose the flexibility at this point. So if you want flexibility, stop here. Otherwise, if you want more detail, we're going to continue. So I want to load this selection from here. So I'm going to control or command click. I've loaded that selection. Now, what I want to do is contract it. So I'm going to choose select. We want to modify that selection and we're going to contract it. Let's do it by about, I don't know, 30 pixels and see what that looks like. Now, one of the things I wish they would put into Photoshop is the ability to have a live preview as we do things like contracting and feathering and things like that. So if Adobe's watching, that's my feature request. All right, so let's grab this. All right, that's gone down quite good. It's pretty close. You know what? I'm going to go just a little bit more. So we're going to choose select, modify, contract, and I'm going to give it another 10. Okay, that's good. So right now what we're doing is we're selecting the area inside this little square. I just want to select the areas around the edges of that square. So we're going to inverse that selection. Command shift I will inverse it. And you can see now we've got the marching ants around the edge of the canvas, which means that that area from the edge of the canvas to there is now selected. All right, so now we're just going to choose select, modify, feather, because we want a soft edge. We don't want it to be too hard. So we know I've got about 30 pixels we're dealing with. So I'm going to give this about a 10 pixel feather. So it's going to soften that edge. And now we're going to apply an effect. So if we choose filter, distort, and then under distort, we're going to use zigzag. And under zigzag, we've got different types. We could go from the center here. We could go out from the center. So I would definitely encourage you to try some different ones, you know, to see what's going to give you the effect. I think from center is probably going to work fine and um, click OK. And let's control D to turn off the selection. Notice this gives us these beautiful glassy edges around the edge, just like you saw on the Apple. So this here, we could start to put text on top of it and we're going to get very close to that liquid glass effect. However, I noticed on some of the icons, there was an additional effect here. So why don't we go ahead and we're going to apply that additional effect. I'm just going to control click on the original. So we get this shape here. And on this shape, I want to apply on a brand new layer on top. We're going to apply a gradient adjustment layer. Okay, so here's our gradient fill. Now, in order to do something, we need to load in some of the gradients. I've loaded them in here, the legacy gradients. If you haven't loaded them, you want to go under the window gradients. And then under the gradients dialog box, choose this hamburger menu and then choose legacy gradients. And then when you do that, it's going to load in. One of the things that's quite nice is notice I was able to do that for the gradient fell open. You couldn't do that before. Okay, so under the gradient, we want to go to the legacy gradients, and then we're going to choose this rainbow colored gradient. Now, we don't need all the colors of the rainbow. Um, in fact, if you looked at the, um, the Apple one, you could even create your own custom gradient, but that's fine. So I want to change the angle of this. I want it to go sideways, and I want to increase the scale because we don't want all of those. We just want a little bit of color. But if you notice, where we want to go is kind of into the purples and reds. You can't see that there. But here's a little trick. If you click on the canvas and drag, yes, you can drag through that gradient. Perfect. So that's giving me closer to the colors I want. Experiment with the scale, get what you want, and click OK. All right. So we're getting close. But if you look at the gradient on the Apple ads, we're just getting a little bit at the bottom. Now I would use 
a layer mask, but notice I'm already got a mask for the shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this inside a group. This way we can stack different masks. So I'm just going to hit Control G or Command G for group. And notice in the group, we've got our gradient. Excellent. Now we can apply another mask on here. Here we go. And now we can grab our gradient tool. So hopefully you guys are still tracking with me. Um, it's fun for me to be able to dig in a little bit more. And All right, so we're going to go into the basics and we're just going to use the black to white gradient. Now, when we apply this gradient onto a mask, black is going to hide the contents of the layer while the white is going to show it. Let me show you here. See, by doing that, we can create our layer of transparency. Look at this. So we can have it come up however much we want, and then we can have it drop wherever we want. So if you look at the Apple ones, it's kind of like a little bit at the bottom or maybe some of the sides, and you can stack these to make it look closer to how you want it to go. And if you want, you can play around with that opacity in the blending modes. Just give it a little bit of color in there. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. Yeah, you know, at this point, you know, you're just going to put whatever you want in here. But let's go a little bit further here. One of the things I want to show you is how to be able to reuse this. If we open up our styles and if we choose window, you can see it's not showing by default. It's not used as much as maybe it has been in the past. And we want to create that style. What we do is select that layer and just hit plus. And then we get liquid glass. So I hope you enjoyed this week's tutorial, something a little bit different. Drop a comment underneath and let me know if you enjoyed this and if you would like to see more of these kind of tutorials. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.